Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today, we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 93, the vow of chastity. To what does this vow oblige us? To renounce marriage and to avoid everything that is forbidden by the Sixth and Ninth Commandments. Is a fault against the virtue a violation of the vow? Every fault against the virtue is is at the same time a violation of the vow, because here there is no difference, as in the case of poverty and obedience, between the vow and the virtue. Is every bad thought a sin? No, every bad thought is not a sin. It becomes so only when the acquiescence of the will and consent are joined to the consideration of the mind. Is there anything over and above sins against chastity which is detrimental to the virtue? Lack of custody of the senses, of the imagination, of the feelings, familiarity and sentimental friendships are detrimental to the virtue. What are the means by which the virtue may be preserved? To conquer interior temptations with the thought of the presence of God, and moreover to fight without fear, and for exterior temptations to avoid occasions. There are in all seven principal means to guard the senses, to avoid occasions, to avoid idleness, to remove temptations promptly, to remove oneself from all and especially particular friendships, the spirit of mortification, and to reveal all these temptations to one's confessor. Besides this, there are also five means of preserving this virtue, humility, the spirit of prayer, modesty of the eyes, fidelity to the rule, a sincere devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Vow of Obedience The vow of obedience is superior to the first two. It is, to tell the truth, a holocaust, and it is more necessary because it forms and animates the monastic body. To what does the vow of obedience oblige us? By the vow of obedience, the religious promises to God to be obedient to his legitimate superiors in everything that will ordain in virtue of the rule. The vow of obedience makes the religious dependent on his superior in virtue of these rules for his whole life and in all his affairs. A religious commits a grave sin against the vow every time he disobeys an order given in virtue of obedience and of these rules. The virtue of obedience. The virtue of obedience goes further than the vow. It embraces the rules, the regulations, and even the counsels of the superiors. Is the virtue of obedience indispensable for a religious The virtue of obedience is so indispensable to a religious that, even if he were to perform good actions contrary to obedience, these would be evil and without merit. Can we sin gravely against the virtue of obedience? We sin gravely when we scorn the authority or the order of the superior, or when spiritual or temporal harm to the community results from our disobedience. What faults endanger the vow? To be prejudiced against the superior or to harbor an antipathy for him, murmuring and criticism, tardiness and negligence. The degrees of obedience, prompt and complete fulfillment, the obedience of the will, when the will persuades the intellect to submit to the advice of the superior, To facilitate obedience, St. Ignatius suggests, moreover, three means. Always to see God in our superior, whoever he might be. To justify in itself the order or advice of the superior. To accept each order as an order from God, without examining it or reflecting on it. General means humility. Nothing is difficult for the humble. O my Lord, Inflame my heart with love for you, that my spirit may not grow weary amidst the storms, the sufferings and the trials. You see how weak I am. Love can do all. 
Here St. Faustina writes about the vow of chastity and then about the vow, the virtue, and the degrees of obedience. Regarding chastity, she writes the thoughts that come into our head are not sinful in themselves. They can be a temptation. But when we entertain the thoughts and consent to them, they become sinful. There are then some very helpful ways listed which can help us to maintain and to preserve the virtue of chastity. And all people can benefit from these things, the single, the widowed, the married, and the religious. You don't have to make a vow to benefit from some of these helps. Sadly, many people in society today have a problem with pornography since it is so readily available on the internet. And many of the helps and the uh, means listed here can be of assistance to people. Here, the Catechism of St. Faustina emphasizes the importance of the vow of obedience for all religious. It is at the heart of the religious life. I remember when I became a superior of a religious house for the first time, I was in my early 30s, and I was the youngest member of the house. So I could imagine that the vow of obedience would be very difficult for the other members of that house who had lived the religious life far longer than I had. Also, I remember when I was elected to serve on the General Council in Rome, I had learned the meaning of the vow of obedience right then and there. Because for the first time in my religious life after 19 years, the community was asking me to do something that I didn't particularly want to do. It meant moving to Italy for at least six years and learning a new language. But God purifies us through the vow of obedience. I have now lived in Rome for 16 years, and I have had experiences I never expected all over the world, and I did learn a new language, Italian. God is full of surprises, and if it had been up to me, I would have said no, not knowing what I was turning down. So saying yes to God's plan for our lives has its benefits. He knows what's best for us.